Well, hello there. My name is Sometimes Heather, and I play Old School Sunlight. Last week, I showed you how to take advantage of crafting stations, and today, I wanted to continue along the lines of possessions, namely gold. ESO is a game that kind of requires you to be loaded. It has its own economy and trading system. Making the most of what the game has to offer can be a bit tricky, especially if you're still a small one. Let's see how you can make gold in quick, efficient ways. In order to earn gold, you'll need to be able to sell things to other players. That means you'll need to join a trading guild. I've made a video about guilds in the past, but perhaps a quick recap is in order. Guild listings can be found under your social menu. Choose a guild that looks right for your needs and send an application to join. Most guilds are happy to accept new members, but some frown upon tinies. If you can't find a trading guild to join, try a let's play together type of a guild in your region. Country-specific guilds are the most welcoming and many of them have a guild vendor. After being accepted, you can start selling immediately. But what sells? The answer isn't univocal, but there are certain things that are always in demand. Rare materials, furnishing patterns, style pages and motifs, and parts of special collectibles from DLC public dungeons always sell. These are also available to all players regardless of level. Let's take a closer look, starting from collectibles. Most DLCs come with two public dungeons which both have a special runebox type item. Both dungeons drop different fragments. These can be combined into non-combat pets, costumes, furnishings and even a target dummy. Fragments that drop from the latest public dungeons are, of course, most sought after and therefore most valuable. Older ones do have established prices but never seem to lose popularity. Picking up fragments can be time-consuming. From personal experience, I'd say you're likely to get two fragments from clearing an entire dungeon. That means killing all bosses and every single horde. Time-wise, we're looking at an hour or so. If public dungeons didn't offer anything else, I would deem this method of money-making too time-consuming. We do have to remember that each kill will give you a bit of gold, a bit of experience and randomized loot. Dungeons also have containers which can hold all sorts of surprises. Keeping all this in mind, I'd say fragment farming, when combined to all other ways you can find profitable items in public dungeons, is a viable and reliable, if a bit slow, way of making gold. If you're able to get champion gear, public dungeon farming becomes a bit more interesting. Public dungeon bosses drop overland armor pieces along with weapons. Weapons and armor, depending on traits, can be quite expensive. I would recommend installing Tamriel Trade Center or Master Merchant to keep track of current prices. Fragments and gear aren't the only thing that you can get from kills. Beasts also drop raw materials. When refined, the process may yield tannins, which are used to improve armor. Rubido leather scraps, when refined, can give you drag wax. This is needed to make legendary light and medium armor. It sells for approximately 13,000 gold a pop. Even though farming for rubido leather scraps is a bit slow, this is another reliable way to make gold. You do need maximum advancement in the tailoring skill line, if you aren't yet on champion level 150. Being a fully skilled tailor, woodworker or metalworker has other benefits in making gold. These grant you access to daily crafting writs, which in turn grant access to master writs, surveys and sellable materials. Completing daily writs grants reward coffers which hold all goodies mentioned. Master it's special assignments that require you to create unique pieces of armor or weaponry, do not yield gold when completed. Instead, you'll get red vouchers. If you'd like to make gold with master it's, you can sell them for gold. Most of them aren't that valuable, but when making gold, every little bit counts. 
If you know you can't complete a master it, it might be smarter to sell it than to have it clutter your inventory. Surveys don't require you to craft anything. Instead, they send you to distant corners of the world to gather resources. As resources can be turned into valuable materials, I would use them instead of selling them. Resource nodes also drop furnishing materials. Hardwood, which comes from logs, and mundane runes, which come from essence runestones, sell for a high price. Gathering materials takes time and isn't always that rewarding. Accumulating a stack of 20 hardwood can take a long time and you'll only get 50 grand for it. The same goes for mundane rooms. If you'd like to concentrate on materials, it might be more rewarding to focus on more exotic stuff. Potent Nancrux is used to make Nernhound weapons. As the Nernhound trait increases weapon damage by quite a lot, Nancrux is pretty sought after. You can only find it in Cracklawn. This area was originally designed as a veteran-only group area, and it's still a challenging place. Going in alone might be hazardous to health. Still, Nancrux is worth the risk. Nancrux drops rarely from resource nodes, heavy sacks, and from beasts that drop medium armor materials. Walwas are known to drop Nancrux. You can also find the material from five Nancrux mines scattered around Cracklawn. As one potent Nancrox sells for about 70,000, I would definitely go for that. When running around Cracklon after a specific material, killing every beast that crosses your path increases profits. As chances of actually finding Nancrox are pretty low, gathering resources along the way is a great way to make certain you don't come out empty-handed. DLCs don't only come with fragments for pets and dresses, but also style pages, crafting motifs, and new furnishing recipes. Many of these sell for a lot of gold, especially during the first weeks and months after a new DLC is launched. You can get style pages and crafting motifs by completing daily quests. There's a different page for each armor piece, so collecting them all takes patience. Most of us don't have the patience, so style pages sell easily. Each event also has unique style pages. During said events, when everyone wants to get rid of excess pages, prices can be low. A week or two after, event styles are worth more. The further we get from a particular event, the pricier the style pages. Doing dailies doesn't take that much time and the results can't be guaranteed, Profits may exceed expectations. Furnishing patterns can be found in containers all over Tamriel. Urns, backpacks, cabinets and chests, even daily reward coffers, can all drop recipes for food, drink and furniture. While blue and green patterns drop in abundance, purple and gold ones are a bit more rare. There are quite a few locations that are filled with lootable containers. The Monastery of Serene Harmony in Shimmerine is a good one, along with um, this public dungeon in Blackreach under Western Skyrim, and Vivek City if you don't mind stealing things. Recipe farming is slow and tedious, and the results can't be guaranteed. I enjoy it, though. Public dungeons are fun, and looting containers is an added bonus. Before going in, do be sure to activate a few particular stars in the Encraft constellation. Treasure Hunter increases the quality of items you find in treasure chests. This helps if you'd like to find sellable gear or recipes. Plentiful Harvest grants a 10% chance for resource nodes to drop double materials. Homemaker gives a 10% chance to grant two recipes instead of one, and Meticulous Disassembly boosts your efficiency in refining raw materials. One last method remains. This is a bit of a boring one, but rather efficient. That's fishing. This is a safe, easy, low-risk farming method that can yield a pretty good profit. Before starting, get everything in the fishing section in the craft corner. Real technique and angler's delight will make you a faster, more efficient fisher. What you catch can be eaten, 
used as bait, sold to regular merchants for a set amount of gold or sold at a guild vendor. Fishing is also a great way to make new friends in ESO. There are guilds in ESO dedicated solely on catching fish. I highly recommend this method of making gold even though it is a bit stationary. All in all, farming for gold is rather different to farming for experience. Results can be slow and process even slower, but as rush is removed, we get to enjoy the beauty of the world around us while gathering our fortune. I do hope you'll enjoy both the journey and the world. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all later. Ta -ha.